Hello and good evening. This is me, Imran, your PMP trainer, and ready to bother you again and again. Uh, based on my plan, which was provided to you on WhatsApp, we are going day by day activity now. Uh, we are starting our day two, and as per my promise, I am supposed to send you the process group interaction and their mapping. How does it work? Before we proceed, this these are our five process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing, which means in initiating, we get the commitment that we need to start a project. To initiate a project, we need to have prior things, which are business documents, business case, and benefits management plan, which contains the needs, the financial calculations, the benefits, return on investments, the strategic alignment, benefit owners, and metrics with which we we'll measure our performances. Once we get the official commitment from the organization, the sponsor is hired and the project manager is being hired also. So we have our agreements and based on that, we will complete our initiating process group. Then we'll move on to the planning where we will plan in detail with our process groups. What are the processes involved in planning? Once our baselines are approved, then we'll go for executing and we will work according to our baselines what we have planned and get it approved by the sponsor while executing we'll measure our performances and check the variances and we'll take the necessary actions accordingly once all the work is finished we'll go for close and based on our understanding the main uh, smaller shortcut i have given you stc qrr pics to remember the knowledge areas so we have 10 knowledge areas project integration management project scope management schedule management cost quality resource communication risk procurement and stakeholder management we discuss in the class that our project will always start with the first process which is what develop project chart without this process our project can never start because once we execute this process output is what project charter which contains high level objectives high level risk assumptions constraints major milestones exit criteria from the project stakeholders names and list and project manager name and authority and his organization and its authority once you have your charter developed and after becoming the project manager your first task is what to identify a stakeholder and the output will be stakeholder register which contains the name of the stakeholders their contact information their classification influences and most importantly needs and expectations once you have the stakeholder register and you have collected their names and everything. Now we'll go for planning. And in planning, our uh, first process of planning is what which belongs to integration is develop project management plan, which is the combination of all the plans, or we call it subsidiary of all the plans, 10 plans, three baselines, chain management plan, and configuration management system. Once I will start working on it, the first thing we will always plan is what scope. So First, we will not plan the scope. First, we will plan that how to prepare the scope. And this task is done at the time of plan scope management. And this is our understanding that our knowledge area will always start with the management plan of that particular knowledge area. So knowledge area is project scope management. The first process will be plan scope management. The knowledge area is project schedule management. The first will be plan schedule management. Then we will have plan cost management, plan quality management, plan resource management, plan communication management, plan risk management, plan procurement management, and plan stakeholder engagement. So this is the artificial intelligence of Excel. It understood what I was expecting to say. Then we concluded that our knowledge area will always finish with the control of that knowledge area. So in monitoring and controlling, which belongs to integration, is what monitor and control project work and if requires we need to perform integrated here we get the change request approved with that of change control then we have to control scope in monitoring and controlling we have control scope Similarly, we have to control the schedule, control cost, control quality, control issues, control communication, control risk, control procurement. The things which we cannot control, like I cannot control the risk, so for sure I have to monitor the risk 
I cannot control the stakeholders. I have to monitor their engagement. So the control stakeholder world will not be there. We will have to monitor a stakeholder engagements. They are not being met. We have to take the change request. Similarly, I cannot control the communication, but I can monitor the communications. Monitor rest, monitor communication, and monitor stakeholder. So based on our understanding, 10 plans, 10 controls. So a part of that, once our planning is approved, to complete the planning, we have more processes to be completed. So in, after plan scope management, I will collect requirements from the stakeholders, which were listed in the stakeholder register. After collecting the requirement, I will get the requirements traceability matrix, which contains all the information from origin to destination. Then I will be able to define a scope, which is the biggest document, the clear picture. Once I have the clear picture, I will decompose it to increase the accuracy and to identify the work in a single framework. Once I have created WBS, I will get the scope baseline and I will submit for approval. Once approved, I have to control the scope. And when the work is finished, I have to validate from the relevant stakeholder. Similarly, once the plan is schedule management, I will define activities based on the critical path method or critical chain method. Once I will define activities, I have to sequence them and to sequence activities, I will use the dependencies, mandatory, discretionary, external or internal dependencies or relationship, finish to start, start to start, finish to finish and start to finish. And we also need to check leads and lags. Lead, you can start an activity earlier than its planned time. Lag is what? Mandatory waiting time. Once we have sequence activities, we'll get the project network diagram. Then you will estimate activity duration. And for estimation, now you know you need to provide basis of estimates as well as what you have to do. You have to perform analogous parametric or bottom up estimation. Analogous from past record. And then parametric mathematical calculations, bottom up, very detailed with the help of WBS. And the last one is what three point estimation, which is actually for uncertainties. Once you will estimate activity duration, then we'll be able to develop schedule. Once we have our schedule, then plan cost management, then I will estimate cost and I will use the same thing basis of estimates and I will have my cost estimates. So I will determine budget and when I will determine budget, I will get cost baseline, which includes contingency reserve for identified risk. And if I add management reserve for unidentified risk and the cost baseline, I will get the project budget. There is nothing more in planning. There is nothing more in quality. Uh, planning for quality. In plan resource management, I will estimate activity resources that how much resources I need for the activity so we can plan accordingly. Estimate activity resources. Plan risk management, I will, in communication, we have already prepared our plan. In plan risk management, I'll prepare my plan. On those bases, I will identify this. In plan risk management, I will identify the stakeholder appetite, their aversion, neutral, or seekers. And based on that, I will start identifying the risk. Once I will identify the risk, I will perform what? Qualitative risk analysis. Qualitative risk analysis. And if required, I will perform quantitative risk analysis. Quantitative risk analysis, qualitative risk analysis. Once all the risks are qualified and quantified, then I will plan their responses. Go down, plan procurement, there is nothing in here, and plan stakeholder engagement are already done. Once our baselines are approved, then we go for executing and for executing integration is what direct manage project work where I will work according to the plan. And similarly, we have what? We have to manage project knowledge to get the project uh, issue logs. Then I will do what there is nothing in executing for here, here and cost. Also then in manage quality, I will manage quality accordingly. And in resource management, I will do what? I will acquire the resources. Because I will not acquire the resources at the time of 
then I will develop team after recording with the help of forming a strong and normal performing journey, Maslow or Hertzberg or 3x and y. And once we have developed team, then I have to manage the team according to my powers. Manage the team while working and for managing, we have the powers, expert, reward, penalty, formal or referent power. And while managing, we could have conflicts. So we have to apply the conflict strategies, which is what? Avoid, smooth, accommodate, force, compromise or collaborate. In the risk, we will have in the plan communication, we have to manage communication according to our communication management plan accordingly, which means we have to perform the managed project communication. In the risk, we have to implement the risk response, which we have decided in the plan, which is what avoid, escalate, mitigate, transfer enhance share or we have negative risk or positive risk accordingly we have to take actions in plan procurement we will conduct procurement where we will select the seller and make the agreement it could be fixed price where buyer is safe and seller at risk or cost reversible where seller is safe and buyer is at risk or time and material where we have unit rates defined and here we will manage the stakeholder engagement so in monitor and control we have monitor and control project work and if required we perform produce the change request based on work performance report and then we will have our integrated change control to approve the change request once approved we will go back and we will start implementing the change request. then we will validate the scope and all the work is finished in the meanwhile, we'll control the schedule for any variances. We'll go for crashing or fast tracking control cost. We'll perform ETC, EAC, or TCPI to find out if we have variances, control quality. We will use tools to verify the deliverable so we can validate the scope. We will control the resources and we cannot hire or fire, so we'll replace the resources. And we'll monitor the communication if everyone is receiving the right information at the right time or not. We'll monitor the risk. If any new risk is identified, we'll go and plan it again, identify it, and then plan it, qualify it. And if something has changed its thing, so we we'll perform analysis again. And if there is unknown risk and if it is impacting, we have to do workarounds which are unplanned risk response. In the meanwhile, we have to plan their responses. In control procurement, we'll control the procurement and We'll check the performances if required. We'll produce the change request. If all the work is completed, we'll perform administrative closure, collecting all the documents, closing all the claims, archiving the things. Then we'll monitor stakeholder engagement. In the meanwhile, so all the things are being done simultaneously. And for when all the work is done, we we'll close the project where we will produce the final product or service or result. And we'll perform the transition from our project site to operation site so it could be closed project or closed phase of the project so these are the 49 processes based on our knowledge it's almost five to ten minutes video maximum i try to keep it as short as possible to cover all the processes in as brief as possible regarding the ittos you know that all the process name will have the similar output name and majority of those plannings will always have what input the op and eef and for those uh, two techniques or tools, we can use expert judgment while you are using it. For costing, we perform multi-criteria decision analysis or cost-benefit analysis for resources. And that's how we'll do the things. If you have any questions, do let me know. I will reply you in the WhatsApp. Apart of that, this video is complete. And uh, we'll see tomorrow for the chapter number one with the revision of chapter number one. Uh, let's go together and let me help you to pass the exam as soon as possible best wishes good luck i'll see you in the next video which is tomorrow